today we're going to talk a little bit more about the pyramids and the relationship to pi. Uh, we went over that pretty well in the last video about the Great Pyramid. We were talking about how we arrived at pi and everything else. Today I want to talk a little bit more about why. Because that's a big question that really doesn't even get considered a lot. And it really should be because it's a huge question. And I'm going to try to explain why that is. We're going to talk about, like I said, tolerance. This is engineering tolerance. So how accurately, when you measure something, you construct it. How accurately does it reflect the design? You'll get a blueprint for something, you construct it, and it is correctly constructed to precise measurements within however many you know, inches, thousandths of an inch, whatever it is. That's tolerance. It's important to understand that there is the, the more precise you get, the less you can tell of any imperfection, obviously. So if you build a doorway, you know, you obviously you want the, the corners to be about 90 degrees. You want them to be very close to 90 degrees. If they're 30 degrees, you're going to know the difference. Okay, if they're 80 degrees, you're going to know the difference. Okay, if it's 91 degrees, you're not really going to know the difference. All right, and that's what I'm talking about. There is a tolerance beyond which it stops becoming useful to work to, re to reach that perfect perfection, you know, that number. Okay, and recognizing that is one of the main reasons we today are able to build so many things in such a short amount of time. If we meticulously worked on every stinking little thing to make sure that it was exactly the way it was supposed to be to the exact most precise way that we could do it, we would not have a society today. You could not build even this small house that I live in in that way okay, and not just take up way too much money and way too much time. You could build 10 houses for the amount of money that it would take and the amount of time that it would take. So that's, that's really the problem when you're talking about how they took this structure that occupies over 13 acres and the overall measurements of the thing end up being so close to actual pi. This is why the establishment will not recognize this question. They will tell you that it's all coincidence. They will tell you that, well, that's just, that's just you playing number games. They have to, because if they don't, if they recognize that, yes, somehow or another, almost 3,000 B.C., there were people out there building something to a degree of precision that makes no sense, and who knows why? And that kind of a narrative does not sit well with academia in general. It does not sit well with Egyptologists that are faced daily with every controversy under the sun and every YouTube video that anyone can create about, you know, aliens or magical whatever. They, they, they have to fight on every front all the time, and so they, have, they feel like they have to eliminate at every, every point so that they can say, no, we are the authority. We are the people that know the most about this, and this is what we are telling you, Okay. And in a lot of cases, that's true. But the downside of that is that they are they completely dismiss stuff like this because they don't want to admit that we have questions that have no chance of being answered based on what we currently know about ancient Egypt. And so we're going to go over this a little bit. First, I want to review from the first video, in case you didn't watch or just to get back into it, 2580 BC, thereabouts, this is when establishment says this is when the pyramids were built. They were built about 2580 BC. All right. At, at that time, they constructed the pyramid, as we went over the last time, to reflect pi to a very, very precise degree, very close approximation. Okay. This is 2580 BC. Almost six centuries later, in 2000 BC, we have the first indication that the people in Egypt had developed a means to arrive at pi. They did not use at that time any mathematical proofs. 
They didn't have mathematical proofs. Even in 300 BC, the Greeks introduced mathematical proofs to Egypt. The people of Egypt did not have that concept. Okay, so we're talking about nearly six centuries after the creation of the Great Pyramid, using the best knowledge they had at the time, six centuries later, no mathematical proofs, but yet still arriving at pi at 3.16, which is pretty close. Now, that seems to indicate that there may be some kind of knowledge discrepancy. Like I said before in the previous video, knowledge tends to increase, not decrease. So there is, there may be something going on. Like I said before, maybe they were aiming for 3.16 and just by some happy coincidence arrived so miraculously close to actual pi as we today understand it. Okay, that's a possibility, but we have to also entertain the idea that there's, for some reason, they had some method of thought or some kind of understanding. Maybe it wasn't even the same people. We have to understand that you're talking about 600 years ago. Think about 600 years before now. Where was the world 600 years before now? There was no United States. You know, Europe was completely different. Everything was completely different. All the people were different. The culture was different. The language was different. Everything was different. The understandings of the world that we live in 600 years ago and the society that lived here, they were completely different things from today. You put a person from 600 years ago into the 21st century and they will be the blatantly out of place just like if you put us 600 years before now okay you can't you're talking about what 1400 1418 what was the world like in 1418 that's before christopher columbus and so this is what i'm talking about we're just we're using these as numbers and people are forgetting the human element okay in 2580 bc if that's when the pyramid was created somehow they created something that that was amazingly close to pi on a scale of 13 acres and almost 500 feet high. 600 years later, pi is 3.16. No mathematical proofs, no rigorous way to even arrive at it. They got pretty close by trial and error is basically what it boils down to. So that's a question. It is a legitimate question to have how that could be. To quickly go over how we get to that number, we took the base of the, of the Great Pyramid. Each side averaged out at 755.78 feet. Okay, the height is 481.2 feet. If you take the, the base, seven, one side, 755.78, multiply it by 2, and then divide that by the height, 481.2, you end up with this number, 3.1412302580258. All right? And it's, I, wanted, I wanted to make a note that this two, I didn't just add that because it seems convenient. I didn't just throw that in there to say, well, you know what, if I put a two in there, this is all going to work out great. No, that is not what happened. Okay, if you, if you look at the formula for pi, pi equals the circumference or the measurement distance around the circle, pi equals the circumference divided by the diameter, all right? And so you have a four-sided pyramid. If you wanted to represent a diameter on a four-sided pyramid, you have to use two sides. Okay, one side would equate to a radius. Okay, it's not, it's not directly interpretable as far as, okay, because you're taking a square base pyramid and applying that to a calculation for pi, which obviously is, is regarding a circle. So there's a little bit of, of mental interpretation that has to go along there, but it's pretty obvious when you think about it that if you have a four-sided pyramid and you want to represent a diameter, that you would use half of it. You would use two sides. That's why that two is there. That's why that two makes sense. Okay? And so you, this is the formula, and this is the, this is the number that they got. So now that we're now we have this all established, and we have established that 
we have got to at least entertain the idea that perhaps for some reason, by some mechanism, they in some way had some ability to interpret pi accurately because it's too close, all right? Maybe they were aiming for 3.16 way back then, okay? There's no documentation that that's how they arrived at pi six centuries before. There's no documentation about almost anything from six centuries before. Almost everything that we know about the period of time when the pyramids were supposedly built is based on later writings, later recountings. And so now we're going to go ahead and talk about tolerance and why beyond the precision, this is, an, this is a huge mystery, beyond the precision. You, you can build something. Today we can build something to very high precision. I've worked in a machine shop. You know, I can build, you know, very, very precise components for technologically advanced applications within, you know, a few thousandths or whatever of an inch. So we obviously today can build things very precise. The pyramid, pi isn't the only thing. It's also aligned perfectly north and south. You know, the, the cardinal points, it's, it's aligned with north, south, east, and west. It's, it's the, the blocks that build, make up the pyramid, enormous blocks. A lot of them would require the best cranes that we have today to get them to even be moved. And they were placed with this kind of precision. Everything about the pyramid was created with this kind of precision. And so that when you get to the end of it, the measurements work out so that you have things like pi to such a high degree of accuracy. But that's, like I said, not even, it's, it's, half, the, it's half the mystery. That's half the mystery. If, if, if I build this house, I'm going to have levels of tolerance. I'm not going to try to be perfectly precise. My house, your house, everybody's house. I don't care if you spend a ton of money or not much money. There are levels, there are degrees of tolerance and errors that are allowed because it doesn't make any sense. If why would you build something so incredibly accurate if they were aiming for this inaccurate number for pi from six centuries later just to just to provide a, a comparison, even if they were aiming for 3.16, it's half of 1% is what it is. It amounts to half of 1%. Why would you do that? There is nothing, in, there is no house that you walk into built to that level of precision. There is no building that you have ever entered that is to, that we have built that is to that level of precision half a half a percentage okay it's it's not done and it's not because we can't do it it's because it would cost many 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 times more amounts of money take much much longer to create and would provide zero additional benefit no structural benefit no aesthetic benefit, no benefit whatsoever. It does not add to the quality. It only adds to the cost. There is no reason for it. And that's 0.5%. Okay, if they were aiming for 3.16, if they're actually somehow able to have some kind of way of understanding what pi is accurately, and they were aiming for that number, this is so much closer to the actual number pi that it becomes even worse because now it's, 0.029%, so just a little under 0.03%, not 3%, okay? I'm not saying 3%, I'm saying 0.03%. Accuracy in arriving at that number. And so you have to wonder, why would they do that? And there's no answer. Egyptology would just have to say, well, we don't know. We have no idea why they would even do that. We have no idea how they would do that. Would we be able to create today a structure the size of the Great Pyramid with the degree of complexity and this degree of precision? Probably yes. We would have to devote the whole planet's economy, all of our technology, and they say that it was done in 20 years. We could 
probably do it in 20 years. But did they do it in 20 years? That whole narrative comes from recountings from much later peoples. Okay, there is nothing that an Egyptologist can provide for you that says, well, we have a definitive understanding that this took 20 years to build. And this is the evidence that we have to support that. They don't have anything like that. We can't even get a stinking highway repaired in, 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 in that kind of time in some cases. It's, if you take a moment to think about what it takes, what amount of time it takes us now to build with the understanding that we do not employ this level of precision, we do not typically take blocks that are hundreds of tons heavy and place them with this degree of precision or any degree of precision because we don't use them. Okay, we, we nail wood and, and bricks, you know, little bricks that might weigh a couple of pounds. And that's what, and we put them with whatever precision we can manage. And this is how, and, and you think about how long it takes us to build stuff and compare it to the Great Pyramid. And think, and keep in mind that we're talking about people from 4,500 4, years ago. They apparently, you, they'll tell you that they have no technology. They didn't have, you know, all of these things. And, you know, unless you're willing to invoke, you know, the alien agenda or whatever, the magic woo-woo, you're left with a serious problem. How did they do it? You know, I, you could put a pile of, pile of rocks together and make a triangle-shaped mountain-looking thing and you know, and that's all fine, but that's not what this is, and that's the problem. You know, people are getting lost in numbers and not realizing the, the practicalities of this situation that these people built something to reflect complex mathematical measurements to an extremely precise degree on a massive scale for apparently no reason, for apparently no reason. You could not tell the difference. If they just said, well, pi is 3.16, we're just going to make sure we get somewhere, you know, in the low three point whatever. You wouldn't be able to tell. You would not be able to tell. All of these extra decimal places over, you don't need any of that to, to make the point. Even when we do mathematical calculations with pi, we don't usually go more past 3.14. And that's today. And so this is the problem. This is the question. Why would they build something so precise? What is the purpose of such precision? What's the purpose of this? Surely took the entire efforts of their entire society. And, have, and thinking that they did it in 20 years is... I'm just going to say it. I'm calling bullshit. I don't see how that happens. How the pyramid is constructed top to bottom in 20 years. I don't think that I, we might could do that today. We, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we could reproduce the pyramid today. Whether or not we could do it in 20 years, that would that would be my, you know, I don't know, maybe. But we're talking about 4,500 years ago. We're talking about they have they're talking about people lugging rocks up ramps or whatever the the story of the day may be that they're that's their theory, you know, hundreds and hundreds of tons each, lines of people. Well, yeah, they had a lot of people for that time. Their society was large for that time. But you can't just throw, you know, thousands of people onto a work site and say, okay, make the rocks work. You've got to manage those people. You know, you've got to find a way to get these gigantic stones, take so much manpower to move, and then you have to put them in the exact right place where it belongs, no error, and then you have to go get another one and do it again. And you have to do this over and over and over. There's only so many people that you can fit there doing that all at the same time. What level of management will be required for that? And even then, I don't see that in 20 years. I've never seen anything that explains to me how this happens in 20 years. And so that opens up a whole other can of questions. You know, well, the information that they had in Egypt as of, you know, 2000 B.C., 1500 B.C., 300 B.C. when the, when the uh, you know, Greeks came. And they were asking, well, how do these things get built? And that's what they would say. Well, it took 20 years. You know, the Pharaoh came out and he did all the... <laughs> How would they know? How would they know? 
you might as well today ask yourself, okay, what did Joan of Arc have for for breakfast, you know, 600 years before today? I mean, because there's no written record. There's no written record of what these people did. These people, that's the, they say that the old kingdom, you know, built the, built the great pyramids, but there is no first-hand accounting of this, very little. I shouldn't say nothing. There is, I, I shouldn't say there is nothing. There is very little. There is definitely not anything sufficient to say, well, this is how they did it, and this is how long it took. And importantly, this is why they did crap like this. Okay. There is no reason for it. No building is constructed with this level of precision. It takes too much work, too much money, and provides no benefit. And yet they did it 4,500 years ago for no apparent reason to create no benefit whatsoever for anything. They did it. That's a lot of work for no reason. That's a lot of work for useless imperceivable precision and so that's the question this that, that underlies what happens this is one of the reasons why establishment Egyptology will not entertain these kinds of arguments because it's not just an argument about that question it opens up so many more questions that they also cannot answer and it becomes a tidal wave of mystery and they no longer have this iron grip on the narrative that they used to have Okay? And that's what is so important in basically all of establishment science these days. You know, when you're talking about the softer sciences, when I say softer sciences, maybe I mean something different than what, nor what it, you know, everybody else means. To me, uh, math and physics are hard sciences. Chemistry is a hard science. Pretty much everything else, soft science, interpretive science. Okay? Everybody in these kinds of fields have investment in making sure that they control the narrative okay if you are a physicist the the science controls the narrative period now you've got a little wiggle room but it's going to come down to it someday a mathematical equation and you're going to just have to accept it you know with these interpretive sciences when you're talking about digging up crap that's thousands of years old or you know millions of years old or whatever it is or interpreted or history you know always interpretive all of these softer sciences there is a vested interest in making sure that the establishment has the iron grip on the narrative because as soon as they start to lose that grip then they start to lose credibility and it's an unfortunate reality okay it's you know the a lot of in a lot of cases in probably most cases you have people they they, they did not become Egyptologists because, you know, they want to, you know, enforce some kind of stonewalling of new questions, right? They went in because they had questions. They went in because they were interested in the pyramids and they want to learn how to read hieroglyphs. And, you know, they're all, they want to understand about the pharaohs and hear, understand all of these storylines that went on for all these thousands of years. It's very interesting. Okay? That's why they became Egyptologists. So you can't just look at them and say, well, this is an evil establishment, rah, 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 but they have to have some kind of a firm grip on the narrative or they lose credibility. So it becomes, they, they have a disincentive to acknowledge, you know, things that they cannot explain. They have, they, are, they have an incentive to not acknowledge anything that they cannot explain. If they cannot explain why the pyramid was built to such a high level of precision with regard to the number of pi, with regard to the cardinal points, with regard to you know, any number of things, the precision, you know, placement of the blocks, you know, whatever. If it does not, if it may serve to create a more questions than they are going to be able to answer, or even in a lot of cases, legitimately investigate, they're going to dismiss it. They're going to say, well, you know, that's really not that important. What's important is what we know. What we don't know is not important. Okay? What you don't know is amazingly important. Okay? If, if, if a comet comes down from, from, from space and hits the earth and everybody dies, that stinking thing was important. You might not have knew, known about it. 
Okay, but it was important, and that's what that's that's the glitch in the establishment. They are not willing to recognize the importance of things they cannot explain. There are things that we do not know about ancient Egypt. There are things that we don't know about a lot of things, all right? And that's fine. It's always fine to not know and then say, well, you know what? We don't know this. But at the same time, if you find something that seems amazingly important, you have got to be able to look at it and say, holy crap, they knew pi 4,500 years ago. This might be important. I don't know how we're going to explain this. People are going to come out of the woodworks with every magical woo-woo that they can imagine. And we're going to have to deal with that. But we cannot ignore the fact that this is important. Right? This is amazingly important. How did, what were, what were these people like 4,500 years ago? We know almost nothing about them, except for the fact that they have a stinking pretty good math calculation scheme going on, right? How is that possible? How is that possible? What kind of a people existed with no technology, comparatively speaking, to what we understand as even primitive technology? They had almost nothing. But they were still able to do this. It's important. What kind of people were these? How do you explain this without invoking magic and woo-woo and aliens and all the rest of this crap? Is there an explanation? We have to, and, and then you have to start thinking about, okay, what is beyond the facts? We've only got so many facts. This is what we have for facts, and this is what we know for a fact. Now, if we want to understand other things that we have found that are obviously important and yet have no facts to support, we've got to start thinking about these things in a, I will say, a more reasoned way. We've got to start using our faculty of reason to extrapolate, okay, what kinds of possibilities are there? What are the different societal scenarios that would result in this kind of a thing? Right? What are the different ways that a person could arrive at a precise number for pi without going through the typical Greek mathematical proof process? Okay, can we do that? Maybe. Let's think about it. Let's think about what kind of people these were. But they won't do that. They... they Egyptologists, they want to look down in the dirt and they want to say that this is what it is and this is our explanation and everything outside of this thing that I just picked up out of the dirt. You're giving me stuff that doesn't matter because I can't explain it. I haven't found anything in the dirt to, to show me this. We have almost no understanding of anything of relevance regarding the people from this period of time. We have almost no understanding of anything of relevance from these people. It's all about what they can find in the dirt. And there is nothing to be found of relevance. We can find some things. And yes, they have, you know, stuff showing people working on the pyramids. And they've even found, you know, the remnants of the, of the people that camped around the pyramids. And, all these, and that's all. I'm not discounting that. But that's all, it, it doesn't fundamentally explain anything. It doesn't de describe for you what the hell kind of people there were that had no technology and yet were able to reflect complex mathematical values to high degrees of precision. They were not stupid people. Right? They were not knuckle-dragging, just out of the cave, monkey people. Neanderthal people. These were highly intelligent, amazingly complex people, and that society had to be equally complex. It was, it, it's, 
It's the origins of, of society. We have to recognize that it is important to find out things that maybe we can't prove one way or another. Okay? We don't have proof, but we can extrapolate and we can create, you know, theoretical scenarios, various theoretical scenarios, and we can say, well, maybe this happened and maybe that happened, and we can have these discussions. They should be intellectual discussions. They should not be discounted because there's nothing in the dirt to justify them. But if you do that, Egyptology loses its grip on the narrative. And that, beyond everything else, is sacrosanct. They will not loosen their grip on that narrative. They must have it. That's what gives them their credibility. Alright, this video has gone way too long. I'm going to stop it now. Um, you guys just think about what I'm saying. I want, I'm, I'm trying to impart what I think is very important. You know, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me, you know, out here in 110 degree heat, blowing off steam or whatever. But, you know, take it, you know, do whatever you want with it, and uh, we'll see you next time.